Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today we are checking out Flax Engine. Flax Engine just did a pretty major update with the release of Flax Engine 1.5. And today we're going to do a really quick overview of Flax Engine itself. Then we're going to get into the details of the 1.5 update. What you see in front of you, this here is Flax Engine. This was a, um, a 3D scene that I imported from Sketchfab. I uh, came in flawlessly, no extra work involved, and I gotta say, the importing pipeline is one of those really important things when working with an engine. So when it just works, that's always a nice thing. So this is a C and C++ powered game engine. Uh, it is not open source, but it is source available. Uh, the licensing is a lot like Unreal Engine. Uh, you can make up to $250,000 per quarter, so up to a million dollars a year if you make your money pretty well spread across the year. Uh, and anything beyond that is a 4% royalty. Uh, it works a lot like a Unity in the uh, editing environment. You see the various different uh, things that you can create over here. So we can do things like lights, um, post-processing effects. You got full physics integration, UI support, and so on. So very broad support there. In terms of scripting or logic, for example, I have the camera selected like so. And you can add new scripts to things. So added scripts right here. For example, the free camera is attached to this guy. You have two programming options. Both of them have live reloading support. Uh, the first one is the C++ programming language. And the second one is C Sharp. So if you are looking for an alternative to um, something a little smaller and focused than Unity or Unreal Engine, this could be a good pickup for you. Again, uh, the importing pipeline works quite well. Let's go check out what a script looks like. So go ahead and edit this free camera script. Uh, as you are going to see, uh, it is entirely in um, C Sharp. In this case, you could also, again, do C++ if you so wished. Uh, there is also a plugin available for um, Visual Studio Code for directly integrating with uh, the Flax engine in general. Uh, so it's definitely a nice little engine to work with. And you got a number of tools on top here. You got great graphic support. And uh, for example, I could come in here and we could go ahead and create a train. All right, go ahead and create a standard train like so. Uh, over here, you can see the train being created. You have train creation brushes all built in. Uh, all drawn over here. You have things for instancing um, things throughout your world, uh, texture painting tools, and so on. So it's pretty broad support. Now, there were a couple of things that were missing from it. And one of the reasons why I said that the 1.5 release is a pretty substantial release is that this one actually added high level networking support, which was a very uh, long requested feature. Now, this is. Um, it's not open source, but like Unreal Engine, it is source available. Uh, so you get source code access even with the free version. Uh, so you can actually go ahead and uh, make changes to it. There are community contributors working on this project and it is improving uh, at a pretty impressive rate, as we're gonna see in just a moment when we jump on over to the actual uh, release notes so you can see the kind of stuff that were added in the 1.5 release. But uh, again, uh, works with C++, C Sharp. It has good importing support, things just work. Uh, and it's got a broad suite of tools in the editor itself. Definitely a nice little engine in that regard. All right, so let's go on over here. If you wanna check it out yourself, it's available at flaxengine.com. I'll show you the GitHub page in just a second. Uh, the full feature set is over here. A couple things to be impressed by. Uh, first off is definitely your platform support. So Windows, Linux, Android, Mac OS, by the way, you can author on all three of those environments. That's something that has changed over time. Um, so yeah, there is Mac and Linux support out there now. Um, plus you can also target PlayStation, Switch, Xbox One, and so on. It's got real-time global illumination, visual scripting, another area I didn't really even cover on. There is a built-in visual scripting language that works okay. Uh, it's got support for large work. So you got 64-bit precision. So you can make, I think it's universe scale uh, size levels if you wish. There's built-in localization service uh, tools. There's online services available. Networking is another neat new feature. Uh, you get train foliage, uh, fog, and level streaming in there. And then you get hot reloading of C, uh, Sharp, and C++. Uh, so it is a very cool uh, engine in that regard, but it's also pretty small. So you're looking at the full repo clone and compilation takes less than three minutes, uh, which is pretty cool. So what we're talking about today specifically, though, is the 1.5 release. So what can we expect from the 1.5 release? Well, there's some actually pretty major things here. So again, there are community contributors to this over 934 commits and 111 pull requests. So there is a solid community around uh, the Flax engine, which is very nice. The big new feature of this guy, though, is high level level networking. So uh, multiplayer, complete multiplayer support came to Flax. Uh, 
so in this update, we've implemented high level networking layer, which includes object replication over network RPC or um, remote procedure calls and the concept of object owners ownership and server authority model. Uh, so the new networking component allowed to quickly create multiplayer games in client server architecture, including self-hosted games. Uh, networking layer will automatically handle connection, setup data, replication, object spawning over the network. It works in both C++ and C Sharp. Uh, very nice. Now, another area behind this is the Arizona framework. Now, this is an open source project. It's under the MIT license, I believe. We'll get back to it in just a second. And this is a... Um, open source framework for common tasks in creating a game. So you can see the kind of things that the Arizona framework actually implements. Game modes, game states, uh, game system, player state, player pawn, player controller, player UI, and more. Uh, it's extensible and comes with built-in support for multiplayer. So it, it's basically a game framework inside of Flax. Uh, there's also a demo application available. So it actually demonstrates how to use the Arizona framework for creating a first-person shooter as an example. Another cool feature is I am GUI. Uh, I did a video on Dear I am, GUI, I am GUI in the past. It's an immediate mode UI, which basically means every frame you draw what you want to be shown. Uh, very popular in for creating tooling. Uh, it's a very lightweight and fast UI layer. So it's now available via a plugin. Uh, so it's uh, created and released an official plugin for Flex games to integrate I am GUI and use it with C++ and C Sharp scripts. Uh, there's also been some performance optimization. So renderer uses multi-threaded draw calls uh, via the job system. Material shader constants are separated into per view and per draw, per draw call data. Um, shadow rendering is batched with the main view. Uh, so massive performance improvements for large scenes with 10,000 plus meshes uh, or in levels with many shadowed lights. Um, also existing graphic features such as DDGI, which is global illumination uh, and global sign distance field. Uh, global sign distance field is actually what um, the Godot game engine uses for its global illumination system. It's sort of like a lumens light. Um, have been optimized for bigger game productions. Uh, and then we got hierarchical tags. Uh, namespaces can empower gameplay programmers. Actors have a list of those tags, which makes them more usable. Also, the new editor supports easy tag picking, which can be used in other gameplay systems. Tags are lightweight and scalable solution for well-organized game productions. Uh, so it's a way of like identifying things, organizing them in the editor and within your game code, a useful thing. Another cool thing is DLSS, which is basically what well, used to be server side, but it's AI powered upscaling. This is NVIDIA solution. DLS stands for deep learning super sampling. Uh, they implemented DLSS 3.1, which is very, very current. Um, and then we've got a number of improvements to the editor, uh, GPU memory profile or an asset profile improvements to the gizmo tool for better readability and scale tool with two axis mode, new actor icons, improved property panels, uh, editor usability and custom game viewing sizing. Now this one is an upcoming feature, but they've started porting over to .NET 7. Uh, .NET 7 will give you support for uh, C Sharp 11, uh, faster performance. They're saying far faster. And when you put the word, oh, sorry, far better performance. Uh, when you put the word far in front, it definitely uh, amplifies it a little bit, right? Uh, then we've got uh, ability to use native and uh, managed debugger in Visual Studio 2022. Speaking of 2022, need to note up here uh, that Visual Studio 2017 and 2019 will no longer be supported once that happens. But honestly, you probably should be moved up to um, Visual Studio 2022 at this point in time anyway. So I don't really look at that as a huge deal. Uh, they also updated their tech demo. So this is kind of showing their, their real-time lighting abilities. It's available up on Steam. Kind of shows off what the engine is capable of. Now, I mentioned earlier on, it is uh, source available. So this is not an open source project. It is under their own license. Do be sure to check out the license. But you can download it. You can make changes to it. You can have your own version of it. Just do remember, if you make over $250,000, it's a 4% royalty uh, per quarter. So up to a million dollars a year if you're making your money on a pretty linear basis uh, and 4% royalty beyond that. So it, the code is entirely available right here. You see it's mostly C++, but C++ and C Sharp uh, mix pretty evenly uh, and it is under that license. So do be sure to check out the custom license to make sure that it works for you. And then finally, the Arizona framework. This is the new release in the 1.5 release, kind of a bunch of common game tasks. It is available here. It is MIT licensed um, and you're going to find it does a lot of, again, game modes, game states, player state, player pawns, player UI, multiplayer ready. Uh, and it's also integrated the new I am GUI functionality into it already. So there is a sample project shows you how to go ahead and use it. 
uh, the various different things that it implements. This is an open source project that is available as well. Uh, and it is now, again, part of this major release. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the Flax engine and the Flax engine 1.5 release. This is one of the kind of the little engine that could for me, it's a very impressive project for the size behind it. And I'm just cheering for Flax engine. I'm impressed by it. If you haven't checked it out, I would check it out, uh, especially if, you know, for some reason, Unreal, uh, Godot, or Unity aren't doing it for you. Flax is definitely a near peer, uh, which is a pretty impressive thing. So let me know what you think of Flax Engine, and if you're already using what you think of the Flax Engine 1.5 release. And that is it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.